Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 to 11. Listen for the word of God. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I'm sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the house, remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into the streets and say, even the dust of your town clings to our feet. We wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Yeah, take nothing for the journey. That is, uh, I'm not following that advice today. <laughs> Although uh, my wife and I are going to be gone for about three weeks, uh, we have a full case of wine packed, which means that I will not lose focus. Um, <laughs> Jesus knew that eventually he was not going to be with them all the time. And they needed to be able to do their ministry. But unlike Americans who typically want to go out and do it on our own by ourselves, he sends them out two by two. And this strikes me as really good advice. Those of us who uh, wander through life um, alone know how difficult it was. My grandmother lost her husband in an industrial accident very early in life, and she spent the rest of her life alone. She probably spent 80 years of her life alone. And that's a long time to be by yourself. And there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. My grandmother really did have the ability to be alone without being lonely. And sometimes you can be, by, be with someone else and be lonely even though you're not alone. But Jesus knew that he needed to send them out two by two. And if you've ever had Jehovah's Witnesses or Mormons come to your door, they pick this message up better than we do. We used to have Jehovah's Witnesses that come by, oh, about once a month, and I would send them away. And finally, I said, okay, here's the deal. I've told you six times that my wife and I are both pastors. We serve churches. We got the news, okay? And you keep coming back. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to come into my house, and for every minute you talk to me, I get that minute to talk to you and tell you what I think is going on. And I said, no, <laughs> we're not interested in listening. We're only interested in sharing and having you convert to what we think, which is the difference between what we do here than what some churches do. Some churches are really, really good with the answers. The problem is sometimes we're not asking those questions. You know, if you are looking for something deeper and say, well, I love the sign. When we would drive into Tacoma from Gig Harbor where we were living, there was this huge sign that said, Jesus is the answer. And it said, 
I'm looking for a place to go eat. <laughs> and I don't want communion, which we're going to do later, and then that would be the answer, but I'm looking for a good pizza place or maybe Italian. I guess they're both Italian, right? But when you simply say Jesus is the answer to every question, it's like sometimes my question is, how do I live out my faith? Jesus is the answer. It's like, yeah, but that doesn't help me in that situation. Sometimes we go two by two because the person you walk with has the answer that you don't have. There are a lot of times when I'm just stuck and my wife has the answer, and, and then I'm in a pickle because I'm really, really happy that I have the answer from my wife, but I'm really, really vexed that I didn't come up with it on my own. You're, you're allowed to laugh at that. One of the things that I've seen in this church is I've seen a lot of people who have partners who really are partners. Sometimes you meet your partner and you realize that's the person I want to spend my life with. Sometimes in ministry you meet somebody and you say that's who I want to do ministry with. Actually in seminary when I met my wife I was actually interested in doing ministry with her before we got together because I was a shovel head as my friends would you know call me and I was going to stay single until I got to the end of my PhD program because if you get married during your PhD program, chances are you don't finish. So I'm never claimed to be particularly bright. If you think so, bless you. I love you for it. But often my wife has answers to questions that I have that it's like, wow, you really are pretty amazing. You really are my soulmate. But as we go through our journeys, and, and I want to go back to the point where you don't have to have the answers. That is one of the things that when Sylvia said, you know, you get distracted. Sometimes people have their ready-made answers, and so you go to them and you say, okay, here's my ready-made answer. It's like Jesus is the answer. Here's my ready-made answer. And they realize you haven't even heard their question. You don't even know how to meet them where they are. This is not a prefab building we're building. This is the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God is always changing, always evolving, always welcoming, always embracing. And Jesus says, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. How's that for comfort? I love at the end of uh, Jesus' ministry where he comes back and he says, Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you. Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? You know I love you, Lord. Tend my lambs. You know, he says this three times. We love being sent to lambs. They're cute. They're cuddly. They're easy to take care of. And the worst that they're going to do is step on your foot. The wolves, not so much. I'd rather be sent to the sheep than to the wolves. I mean, there is that passage in Isaiah where the wolf will lie down with the lamb, but then we all know that the lamb won't get much sleep. <laughs> going to the wolves, and right now in our culture, sometimes it feels like we're going to the wolves every day. Sometimes... I get into a discussion and I never know when I'm going to say something that triggers somebody. And it's like, I thought we were having a safe conversation about where to vacation and suddenly, well, that part of the world is full of X. Okay, how about them Dodgers? You know, I didn't know I was going to the wolves and I really wasn't here to talk about the Lord. And if I was, then I would engage, but I was talking about pizza on the Oregon coast. This is a time for this church where you are going forward with a new shepherd. 
You are going to be walking forward with someone who will lead you. But you are going with one another. And look around, and I know all of your necks work. And if they don't work, then spin your body. Do this, even if your neck doesn't work. Seriously, I'm talking look around. These are the people that are going with you on this journey. There may be somebody here that you don't even know that well, but you're thinking, I want to get to know them a little bit better because maybe we have ministry to do together. And if you're from Manhattan Beach and you pack up your car and you take every dollar you own and you dress up in your nicest suit, you are doing the equivalent of carrying nothing for the journey because you're going to feel naked and alone. Because we want to have everything with us. And the point, as Sylvia said, is don't get distracted. So it's not like you can't take anything, but don't let it stop you. Don't let your stuff, don't let your tools get in the way. And figure out what you're going to do. This is an exciting time. This was a 4th of July weekend, and I really had, I said this before, but I'll say it again, I had the privilege of serving military communities because military communities know what it's like to be in a foxhole with somebody and to put your life in their hands and have them put, you know, and vice versa. They know what it means to rely on somebody because you might not get through the night without your buddy by your side. And relationships are forged in those situations. And the church can be one of those places where we forge those relationships, where we really do rely on one another. We lean on one another. We don't try to do all of it ourselves. And yes, you're going to be going like sheep to the wolves. But the promise is that we don't go alone, not just with our partner, but Christ goes with us. God goes with us. The Spirit leads us, will give us what to say. It's terrifying. I'm not going to sugarcoat it and pretend that it's not. But I'm not saying you have to go to the corner and, and save someone's. But the thing is, is that you are going to get a little nudge somewhere along the line to do something, and then I want you to pay attention. I had a, a colleague who, um, he didn't like religion. He did not think it was worth anything. He thought it was a bunch of hooey. His girlfriend made him go to a revival. He sat in the second to last row like this. And then the altar call came, and somebody tapped him on the back. And he started fuming. Like, how dare you think I need to go up and do this? And then another tap, tap, tap. And finally, he heard this up on the side of the head, and he spun in his seat, and there was nobody there. He says, well, I guess I'm going forward. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen to you. But what's going to happen to you is somewhere along the line, you're going to feel the hair on the back of your neck go up and say, you know... You could do this. You know, they need help. If not you, who? If not now, when? And then find a partner. Or maybe find a partner first. I don't know. I don't pretend to have the answers. Sylvia does not pretend to have the answers. No good pastor pretends to have all the answers. We do have the questions. We do have this like, here's how you pay attention. Because you do not want to look for us to, for the answers as ministers. You want to look to us to help equip you for the ministry that Christ is calling this church to do. I have seen your hearts. Sorry, folks, I have. And I love your hearts. They're good hearts. I have seen your desire to reach our community. 
this is a good place. This is a safe place. Not all churches are good or safe. Find someone to go with you. Take the hand of the person you love. Walk that journey with them. And let's get there together because God is not finished with Manhattan Beach Community Church. Amen.